Hello and welcome to the Tournament Center. I'm Randy Bueller here with Brian David Marshall. We are in Rome, Italy, gearing up for the biggest Magic Tournament of the year, the World Championships. We've got four days and just a ton of hardware to give out over those days. Yeah, it's going to be four days of gladiatorial combat here in the home of the Coliseum. We're going to be fighting for the World Championship title. Absolutely. The World Team Championship title. Check. We're going to be fighting for the Player of the Year title, although yeah, yeah, That's not really much of a battle right. right now. With Watanabe's got, what, 13 point 13 lead? 13 point lead. To, but you know what? You've got Martin Yuza hanging out right behind him. You've got Saito in the mix. You've got Shuhei Nakamura in the mix. There's still some people, if they if they make a run to like the semis or the finals of Worlds, could still catch him. Dark, dark horse candidate, Paulo Vitor Damodorosa. Paulo has the team championships as an extra source of points yep. where he can catch up should the Japanese team, which has Shuhei and Yuya, somehow <laughs> not make it deep into the team competition. So that's your favorite for the team competition, the Japanese team? Japanese team is terrific. Uh, I, I kind of, you know, I have a little bit of, I'm pulling for the U.S. team. Charles Gindi is a, is a, is a powerful competitor. Uh, Todd Anderson just finished uh, in the top eight of, of the uh, 5K. Uh, Ad, Adam Yurchik has been posting solid finishes for the last year. Uh, I really like the Brazilian team, though. That's With my Paulo. pick. My pick is Brazil is going to have a first this year. I think they are going to win the team championship. Wow. Yeah, that's I, my pick. I, wow, that's a Paulo and Carlos, I think, uh, it's a good team. No have question the about tools it. to get it done and make this player of the year race very interesting. Yeah, well, I think it's going to be facing Japan in the finals, though. So Yuya and Shuhei will both get the points there. Hard for Paulo to make up ground if Watanabe and the Japanese sure. do what everyone expects them to do. Sure. We also got a Rookie of the Year title to give out this weekend. Sure. Rookie of the Year title, we have uh, three players clumped up. Mm -hmm. We have uh, this is a close Ak one. Akamasa from Japan, Brian Robinson from the U.S., uh, and we have Lino Burgold from Germany. And Lino has just charged into uh, third place. He's hmm. coming off of a top eight at Grand Prix Paris, and he's now got 26 points. The lead is 28 points. He is on the German national team. Oh, nice. Uh, so, speaking of charging, though, how about Brad Nelson? Brad Nelson just got himself within four points of third place. So he's at 22 points off of his top four performance at Grand Prix Minnesota. So you have a four or five horse race yeah. there. It's all very close. The team championships, if Hong Kong makes a run, you could see yeah. Lee from Hong Kong make a, a push. So uh, it could, it's going to be a very exciting race. That's going to come down to, the le down to the wire on Sunday for sure. First hardware that's going to be getting out this weekend, though, happens tomorrow morning. First thing before round one, Hall of Fame induction time. Three very worthy candidates this year. Antoine Ruel, Frank Karsten, Camille Cornelis, and all enter the Hall of Fame. Going to have the induction ceremony. You'll be up there uh, giving these guys their props, right? Yeah, it's uh, pretty exciting. You know, I, uh, we put together some really nice video int uh, introductions for them. We have the, these guys have beautiful busts that were put together for them yeah, those here are cool. in Rome. They're, they're, it's got to be just an incredible honor for them. And, you know, you look at these guys' careers and you know, I've had, uh, in interviewing different players and talking to different people about these players, I had multiple players say to me, this guy is the third best player of all time. <laughs> this guy is the third best player of all time. Yeah, this is just a great class. It's smaller than previous classes. It's the first class, I believe, that does not have an American player. That's right. This really marks a shift 10 years Absolutely. ago in where Magic left, you know, really left the United States shores and came to Europe. And we see, you know, the rise of the Ruels and, and the, you know. The era of Kai's dominance, and the, of the, course. The, the Dutch players and Kai's dominance, yeah. yeah. So. And speaking of, Kai Bude in the house, playing this weekend. First Magic tournament we've seen him at in a little while. Should be always I mean, fun to see him in you know, the house. You, you'll get to see a rock star in action. There's just going to be a yeah, throng of absolutely. people around him at all times. Now let's talk about the format. So day one is standard constructed. You have the Hall of Fame induction ceremony and then six rounds of standard. Day two, Zendikar booster draft, which is a format everybody keeps talking about how much fun that is to draft. And then extended wraps it up. What are you, what are you looking for in standard? What's the story? So, uh, I mean, the, the best record in the Coliseum right now in standard yeah. has to belong to John. There's a great, great article on Daily MTG right now by Frank Karsten where he breaks down the results of game days around the world. And comes to the conclusion, he's like, this is Jund. This is the aggregate Jund list, much like he did with Fairies last year. Yep. He said, I've taken all the lists. I've come up with the best Jund list. He's like, I think I'm going to play this deck. <laughs> He's like, I think this is the deck I'm going to play because Jund is just so good. There's still people who think they can beat it, right? I mean, Absolutely. the Bushwhacker deck, the, the sort of red aggro, people think they can beat it. Some people think Eldrazi Green can beat it. And we saw those decks win a couple of 5Ks over the last couple of weeks. So Jund isn't winning all the titles. It's sort of... 
acknowledged to be the best deck, but what that really means is it's got a target on its forehead. Right. Like, who knows what crazy concoction the Japanese are going to show up for, show up with for this tournament. Yeah, I, I've definitely uh, heard about some interesting cards doing very well in the, mm. in the deal area. Nissa Ravain, which would indicate maybe Eldrazi Green, sure. has been selling at a pretty steady clip from the dealers. Uh, Amiria uh, Angel has been okay. doing very well. Wow. A card that we have not really seen make any constructed impact yet from Zendikar. But, you know, it's a 3-3 three, three flyer for four mana that spits out 1-1 one, one tokens. Okay. Throw Honor the Pure into the mix. Suddenly it's a 4-4 four, four making two twos. Could see some really interesting... Uh, could see some interesting interactions there. You expect much shape up in extended since Austin? You know, uh, people have been certainly talking about uh, Brian Kibler's zoo list. Yes. But, you know, there's other people who've been talking about hypergenesis. Uh, a card that actually I think we might see that did very well in extended and is apparently also a sleeper in standard and something to watch out for is Valakit the Molten Pinnacle. Mm. Okay. Uh, Scape Shift decks performed very, very well in Austin. Right. There weren't uh, very many, but there weren't very many. They did well. It was kind of hidden, maybe perhaps by some of the boosted draft results that were mixed in, but the deck did very well. And it's also been a very popular deck in standard. And you might see, uh, just to bring it back to standard, we might see a sleeper deck right there. We shall see. So, a lot going on. We'll see what standard looks like. Does somebody have the answer for Jund, or does that deck get its coronation? What's up with extended? Who's going to win the player of the year race? Who's going to win rookie of the year? Stay tuned. A lot going on this weekend for the next four days. Keep your browser tuned. Brian and I will be there bringing you live coverage all weekend long.